day. Timothy grass, orchard grass. Some new new uh, inventory for all of our customers. This is uh, Whitstrom Hay Sales. That's Christopher. Reached out to me. Um, they move a lot of Timothy, a lot of orchard. They got it going on. How, how many did you say that you guys moved from Anderson's last year? You said... On, on average, our average was low last year at 65. What about Orchard? Yeah, a lot more. More than or, more than Timothy? Oh, yeah. How much more? Like double? Triple? Mm, probably not double, but probably a good 30 more maybe. 30 more. There he is, Mr. Manny. Bust out the yellow squeeze today. <laughs> Backup camera makes that stuff easy. Wow. I got you two better ones, so that'll be good for a while. So hold up. You taking the trash with it? Yeah, just put it inside the uh, can. Empty, right? I gotta go out the ranch anyway, so. Everything's good. We're about to get ready to roll out on some deliveries. We got to get going, though. We got a big day. All right. Take care. See you later. Thank Can you for picking that, that up. Way? What's that? Can I go out that one? Yeah. Okay. There's going to be a lot of hay flying out of that thing in the back. Fuck you. <laughs> Imagine he gets back, it's just empty. <laughs> That's a dad setup right there. I'm going to put the master cylinder back and squeeze really quick. And we can drive that shit. So, we took the, the master cylinder out of this squeeze, and this right here is the master cylinder. They call it a power hydraulic master cylinder. So this section right here is hydraulics, and this right here is just a normal master cylinder. So this is for the brakes. This has something to do with power steering. I don't know exactly how everything works in it. But we just replaced all the seals and all the O-rings, all, all the components on the inside of this. I don't think there's anything wrong with the master cylinder itself because it used to leak. I don't know if you see all this fluid build up. All this stuff, all this gunk was leaking from the back side of here and the front side of here. So now that all the seals are replaced, it, sh it shouldn't leak. Um, will that solve the problem of ha having no brakes? Probably not. But what it will do is it'll stop the leak and then we can start to assess the brakes um, so we can cross off okay we're not leaking anymore now why don't we have brakes um, because there's no fluid brake fluid in here so the first step will be putting brake fluid in bleeding the brakes and seeing if we have any leaks and see if it if it holds fluid and if it's holding fluid and then we, we don't have any um, brakes, then we'll have to assess it a different way. I don't know how tight I should make that. But I feel like it should be tight. One thing about working on stuff like this is it's so important to have the right tool for the right job. This is probably not the best tool for this. It's huge for this little tiny space. But when I was working with Ron over there, when I, we took the transmission out and everything, he had every single tool that you could ever imagine 
and it was awesome because if you needed something, go to my toolbox, second shelf, right hand corner, the right tool will be there. That's all I want to be right now, freaking the right tool for the right job. And I just had to pay that squeeze driver, Mr. Manny, to come do our unload because this was down and I can't drive it with no power steering. It'll turn to the left, but I can't turn to the right and compress the hydraulic cylinder on the back because this is missing. Master cylinder in. Fingers greasy. Time to see if it'll start. I don't have any gas for the squeeze either, so hopefully it has some in it. I haven't had to have fuel over here for a while. There's that small little red gas tank you had. That's, that's mixed fuel. For the blower. Steer that way. That means it's working. Because otherwise, it would it would turn this way and stay out. Imagine all of a sudden I had brakes. Well, let's go get our shit loaded. Back in action. Getting loaded up right now. Uh, finish up our day. Cameraman isn't gonna be able to come, but um, I don't know that. Uh, load up the 24 foot, that's loaded. Now we're gonna handle some business. Good morning. Just got unloaded. We got an alfalfa grass mix number two. Amen. Um, getting everything preloaded here, there for the guys to get uh, their deliveries done, and we're gonna head to Imperial. Follow Mr. Brett out there; he's going the same way, so that'll be fun. More than what I told Power is just coming back to the 68s, but I'll, I'll call her right now and see if she'll take it all. But time to roll out. You bring lunch today? No? Yeah, I don't do for me. What's that? I have to bring a lot more. What I probably didn't do it for me. We're going to Raleigh. Go get some Bermuda. The guys are going to handle deliveries. They got a big day. I don't know if you. You guys saw that stuff we were preloading just a minute ago. We gotta deliver all that. And then when I get back, we're gonna have to deliver some more. I don't remember how many bills it was. I wrote it all down, but it's like 400 or something like that. It was a lot. Our day got uh, flipped upside down yesterday. It totally, we had a plan, a good one, that everything had to change because the guy that was bringing in that number two alfalfa, it's not his fault. He uh, he got backed up at another unload where there wasn't a squeeze to unload him. So he had to wait a long time. They couldn't, he was supposed to get unloaded in the evening. And they weren't able to unload him until the next morning. So that put him behind a lot. So it put us behind because the, the load was supposed to come in early afternoon yesterday and we we're gonna de deliver a lot of it, but instead, came in this morning so now everything that we were going to do yesterday got rolled into Thursday. Today is Thursday, right? February 10th. Time is flying. I mean, it just feels like yesterday it was the first. And here we are. We're already almost to the middle of February. We got a lot of stuff to do this year. We, uh, 
we got pretty much everything fixed on the on the squeeze. Hold on one second. I gotta call this customer. Okay. Back in action. The customer is getting hay this morning and was wondering what time we were gonna be there. And because I was on the phone with one of the guys that's been helping me work on the squeeze, I didn't get a chance to call her and let her know that the hay was on the way. Now she knows. The guy should be rolling up like five, ten minutes, unless they stop for breakfast, which I mean, that's okay too. Squeeze is a, man, I don't even know how I feel about the squeeze anymore. It's like we I thought we were good, I thought we were in good, good standing as of yesterday, but then this morning, there's a drop of oil, motor oil, underneath of it. That's, a, that's new. I've, I've had hydraulic fluid and transmission fluid since I've gotten it. And I'm used to those clear and pink. This morning, I had black. Whole different color, uh, whole different fluid. Uh, hey, Trey, that was cool. Uh, this is a pretty commonly traveled route for guys coming out of Imperial, coming into Temecula, Lonsol Valley Center, Escondido. Some of the guys going to Escondido goes more south uh, and come in, but this is a good route, no traffic. But getting back to the squeeze again is we just pulled the transmission out of it, just pulled it completely out, replaced all the seals, everything, all the O-rings, redid everything in the transmission because it was leaking transmission fluid and put it all back together, did all that and had the transmission off of the engine. So now that it's leaking motor oil, it, like I wish I would have known that there was something wrong in the beginning because before I put it back together, that we could have just replaced that seal like that in that in that engine. But now everything's back together, and it was a bear of a job to get that transmission out, replace everything, put it back in. Like we did it with a forklift. We don't have any lifts or anything like that to to pull everything out. So it was like a it was a farm job for sure. We definitely did a farm job on that thing. We just recently too, like it was we started on last week was replacing in, in all the seals in the hydraulic power master cylinder so that the way the squeeze works in there it's got a hydraulic unit that's bolted to the master cylinder so it works as has two functions one function is it is to work with power steering because it's hydraulic steering so there's hydraulic lines that are in the in the master cylinder and then there's the actual master cylinder that goes on the back that has brake fluid in it um, that None of that stuff was working. I never had brakes on that squeeze. So we, we, we rebuilt everything in that, put all new seals, everything, because it was leaking. And I, I just had never put fluid in it because I didn't want to make any more messes than I was already making altogether. So we, once we replaced that, we put it in yesterday, bled the brakes, put brake fluid in it, and voila, we had brakes again. You know, we replaced the, the, the main uh, seals in the... The, the big cylinder, the piston that, that lifts the, the hay clamp, that thing was leaking pretty bad. We replaced that. That it was not a fun fun job either. It, I spent four hours trying to take that cap off, and I was unsuccessful. Came back uh, the next day and spent another two hours, and I finally got it off. It was it was annoying. <laughs> it was annoying. And what we ended up finding out was that that cap had been like cracked or something at some point someone had taken it off at some other point in time and from like pounding on it and it cracked it a little bit and made it not completely circle and it like i don't know if you, if you guys have ever worked on hydraulics before but that thing's got to be perfectly flush to slide down on that big uh, like piston in there and it was not it was not circled there was it was off so ron the guy one of the guys that's helping me with with this uh he got in there and he he put it on his uh, his lathe and he did some some welding in there and got it all all patched up and all the cracks all structurally sound and then he got everything perfectly like round in there and took a little, little bit off of things and made it round and then when I went to go put it back on just perfect just boop, just went right back on so that made it easy and then we replaced the seal the same seals that were bad in the main cylinder the big lifting cylinder in the power steering cylinder on the back, that sucker was was spraying hydraulic fluid. You, you would turn the wheels, 
fully extend it, and you would see like a little, sh like it was shooting liquid out of it. So, got that done. So now, the only things I have to handle on that thing for the operation of the squeeze is assess that drip, drip of oil and find out about that, because that, that's not cool. I don't like that at all, 0%. And then, I do have a, f a few hoses and the fittings that are on the front for the, the side shifting for the, for the hay clamp that are leaking slightly. They're, they have a, a little bit of, of uh, fluid buildup on them, so they're, they're not, there's some, something's leaking from there. So I gotta assess that. Those two things, motor oil, hydraulic fluid leaking from those cylinders in the, in the hose fittings. And then that thing should be good. Basically rebuilt that whole sucker after that. Um, and then all I gotta work on is like the cosmetics of things, which is like a paint job, maybe some new lights, some LED lights. You know, it already has the new tires on it. But once all that stuff's fixed and it's painted, man, that sucker's gonna be sweet. Driving through the desert. Hours. Yeah, but the the, uh, the three hours later. Three hours later. Well, we just arrived in Brawley. Pick up the last little bit of this Bermuda stack. When I first started pulling from the stack that's over here. Oh wow, it's windy. The audio is probably gonna be messed up in this. But when, I, when we first started pulling from the stack, the stack was like all the way out to like here. Cool. I like being able to see all this stuff, and you should see it. We'll, we'll we'll bring you guys back out here when the season really starts kicking up. And this stuff will be like this freaking tall up in here. It's just be flowing, perfect, beautiful. So this is how they do all the irrigation. So normally when the season's going, everything this will be full. This whole canal will be full of water. And this right here is like it's like a trap door basically. So when it's full of water, you pull that up, and then it'll pool up right here. Everything's on a little bit of a, a slope. Some fields are more extreme than others. This is the high side. And it'll flow up downhill, and then there'll be another catching canal on this side that flows into another canal that goes somewhere else. This is the cool stuff. Right? It's the only re reason we're able to do what we do because this stuff out here happens. This is what people need to see is this, this happening because, you know, sadly. Going away, it's dwindling down because we're not we're not being proactive in like getting making sure we have enough water to produce the agricultural things that like pro products that we use. Food, there, there's a lot a lot of produce that is produced out of here. I, I believe, I think it's broccoli. Broccoli is one of the big big things that's that's farmed like in Blythe. I know for, for sure in Blythe broccoli. Um, all the meat that we eat. They eat hay, they eat hay. So it's like if we don't have water to grow the produce or grow the hay on any of this stuff, like we're gonna be just SOL. We're out here, about to get loaded. Josiah, Mr. Bauer himself, rolled up. The turquoise blue squeeze, never seen this one before. It's a cool color. Really, if you did it right, you could almost make the squeeze the same color as the sky.
they're only going to use some of the hay that you guys need anything, you can always reach out to me about it. Say anything about your Instagram. Go through, go through you and you'll get to me. Okay, I'll put it all in, in the description and everything. Uh, so you can follow him on Instagram, see what he does. Because I don't know if you can see that right down there. He's about to head out to Apple Valley. Um, and uh, you can get connected with him on social media too. about to roll back, strap down, take a little stop at the Westmoreland uh, Loves, maybe grab a yerba mate, get a little caffeine in my system, take a leak, get some diesel, five dollar diesel, it's expensive out here. Fueled up. 250 bucks later, and we're barely, barely three quarters of a tank. But it's okay. We don't need a full tank to get back. We'll find cheaper gas in town or something, I guess. That's the one thing that kind of blows about coming to Imperial, and it's and it might be worth the little bit longer drive to Blythe, is because I can go across. The Arizona State border and get fuel for $3.99 a gallon instead of $5.20 a gallon. So, trade offs. Much, much, much later. deliveries and then come back tomorrow and do it all over again we got got a lot of stuff to do tomorrow to do tomorrow as well today was busy I'm glad that the both guys were back in action today delivering some hay they'll probably be out in the longer for another 45 minutes probably head back It'll be done, but we're gonna we're gonna have to take Bermuda, put it on there, and then we'll have to go to the other yard, grab 20 cow head to where we were originally at one of our customers' house because that cow head's not here. And then head back to Wonga. We got a mission ahead of us. I'm hungry and I ate my lunch already, so food might be somewhere along those. So that route. I'm not gonna unhitch that, hook up to that, put 15 more Bermuda on there, and five number one alfalfa, and then when we go to the other yard, get 20 cali and hand load those on there.
been here. I wish it was light, because there's like some crazy buildings right there. What time is it? Feels late. It's not though. Seven o'clock? Yeah. Like s seven flat. I didn't get to deposit that check. I should have done it right there at the yard. I don't have service out here. Could have used it. This is the, the point in time where you start getting delusional. Start getting to the point where you're like. finish <laughs> once you've been up for this many hours and you've been going 24 7 for this many hours if that even makes sense I don't know if I'm making sense at this point a bang sounds good some pork chops Ooh. I would kill off a Jersey Mike sub right now Ooh. with number 17 the good thing is that the majority of all this hay is going right here. So, when we leave, we'll only have a little bit of hay left on you to deliver. And it's only two stops, 10 at one spot and five at another. Sucks, but I didn't have the Bermuda when they needed it, so. Do what we gotta do. 20 cow hay, five number one alfalfa, 64 Bermuda to go in here. It's like 90 bales almost, like 89 bales. Somewhere else. And then 15 more bales, 10, 10 to Verissa off Wilson Valley, and then five to a customer that Jesse and Sean were at earlier today and gave them. 30, 35 alfalfa. What's that? There's so much hay. You ordered it. Yeah, it looks like a lot when it's on the trailer like that. Just now starting to be like sunset for the summertime. I know. I hate winter. There's something about being like functioning like when it's dark. There's something about what when it's dark? It's like functioning or something. Yeah. It's not natural. No, I feel like a speaker. Like I'm, I'm surrounded by speakers. It's like one of those things too. I've always like, I'm like, I want lights down here. But then I'm thinking, no. I don't want lights. Why not? 
not? Well, because then I'll be out here working. Yeah. Because yeah. you excuse to be like, ah, oh, it's dark. It's dark. Fuck it. Can't go. Can't yeah. <laughs> I had a, a friend of yours call me today. Yeah? Who? Chris. Kirsten Booth? Kirsten? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet. How's oh, she? She's good. She's good. She said she was by Tupelo. Yep. Yeah, she, um, yeah, she gets hair and stuff. Right on. I said Haley, I think Haley called me, yeah. Coniglio? Yeah. Coniglio? Is that how you say her name? I think. I thought it was Coniglio. Is there a T in there? Conig? <laughs> Is there a T in there? I don't know. We could both be wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right though. Cause I'm almost positive she said it that way. Um, well, that would make a lot more sense. Basically. She at least lives right off the road. That one, right? Yeah, she's like a petting zoo, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I've delivered to her twice. She was getting like 40 bells at a time from Seal Smith or something like that. Huh. I, I gave her all the pricing and everything and the. Yeah, really, that's all you can do. You don't like it, then whatever. You're like a fucking wine country Yeah. <laughs> do you know anybody that buys Orchard and Timothy? That what? That buys Orchard and Timothy? Um, yeah. Yeah. Is it nice? It's super nice. How much? Um, the Timothy, the number one, is at 32 a bale delivered and stacked. And then the Orchard is at 28, uh, 28.50 a bale. Uh, how much can you do for a semi of it? Uh, I could do 30 a bell. Yeah, I'll tell, I'll call this girl tomorrow. For, for Timothy. Uh, she takes Orchard. Orchard? She gets about a truckload a month. A truckload a month? Yeah. She's been getting it from Oregon and it's a big bill. But... Oh, big bills? Does she want the small bills? Big bills. Yeah. She wants big bills? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I could get big bills of it. I might be able to. I've, I've never asked. I mean, most of my customers have have want the small bales. They, um, they actually like feed their horses like you know. Uh, they have a whole bunch of like weanlings up there and Anza. Yeah. It's all orchard. Yeah. Huh. By the way, I'm looking for some steers. Um, I need two that are ready to be green. Do you know of anyone? I'll make a call. I, I don't do want to guy. spend $1,500 though on a steer. I know that sounds like cheap ass of me, but I'll take two or three of them. Okay, let me call. Because I, I just bought two, um, and I think it was a, a thousand bucks a piece for Yeah, them. I'm good with that. That's yeah. fine. And they were, we're about to butcher one this week. Yeah, you had, have you had it on grain? Yeah, it's been, oh, we grained it for a month. Oh no, don't do that. You gotta grain it at least 90 days. 90 days? Yeah, it takes 90 days to change their gut. Well, it's too late. That's Lindsay. She's cool. She's real. I like the customers that are real. Like, they don't do all the how's the weather shit. They're just like talking about real shit. She's a hustler. She be slinging cows. That's a hustler right there. I made them threes instead of twos. I was thinking I was gonna have to go six tens. So ten, three, and then ten, three again. So then I have four on top. But I was able to get three across on the front. So that means I'm gonna be able to do ten, ten, ten. And then these are fifteens if they're five high. So that means I don't have to go as tall. I'm gonna get way easier. Still gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with those five off. off of the, I might just chuck them over the fence right here and put them on those pallets. I don't want them to mold on the ground. Oh, this will be a, a long and eventful video, bro. Where I hit the 30 minute mark on this one? Ah, did you hear like the, the strings in some situations? Like, a, like.
money. That's it right there. Make sure you still got some calories, bro. We just finished 64 Bermuda, 5 alfalfa, and 20 cowhay. Now we have to go head out Wilson Valley Road, drop a few bills there to finish, finish up one of our customers, and then go all the way to Lake Riverside, drop a few bills there, and then we're home free. And that will be complete of another very long day. The uh, common occurrence over here. You get real good at can't see the can't see. So tired. So tired. It's 1036. Going back to the yard right now. After a very, very long day. I wish I could say that that is an out of the norm type of day. But that is not out of the norm. That is pretty regular. I would say at least three to four times a week is a day looks just like what happened today. Get here early, truckload comes in, unload the truck, load up for deliveries, run to Brawley or Blythe or Calipat and haul something back in and then have a decent amount of deliveries to do when we get back. So it's a real real good uh, picture of what we do on a daily basis. But with that have a good night. If you're watching this, whatever, I appreciate you watching it. Subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends, and follow us along.